Hi guys, it's Danielle here. I'm here today um, for the second time. So full disclosure, I had started another video and made these embellishments and my phone stopped recording because it told me that my memory was full. So we're not gonna be able to see the details of making these, but I'll talk you through what I did and we'll do some more today. And I will show you um, what we made in the last video. So we made the library card pocket. I didn't do anything further to that as well as this pocket. I did also didn't do anything further because it had already been stitched around. Here, I just stitched around the um, journaling card and added the felt button. I glued it down and so there's that and that could either be a tuck spot or a journaling card. And this is the stitched around pocket with the felt button glued and for this tag I decided for these tags just to go around them once because they're so narrow I thought two may kind of hinder on the space available on the back and I tied some of the quilt top fabric through the holes there so that's what I showed you guys I would do I'm gonna set these aside out of the way and then once my my camera I was recording and then it filled up with memory. So basically I took one of these index cards that started like this and maybe we can do one of these on this video if there's time. And I just took a scrap of scrapbook paper and um, made it a little bit more narrow and then just um, tore a book page with this image around it. So I plan to stitch around this and possibly add something right here. I'm not sure. Um, in the video I mentioned, I just kind of got stumped here and I need to come back to it. So I made that. And then this is just one of those craft paper envelopes. And all I did is simply tear this out of a, this is a Corrine Malvern as well as this um, book. I believe it's the Nursery Rhymes book, Corrine Malvern Nursery Rhymes and I liked how the nursery rhyme was on the page and I tore it out and glued it on and then I had a little piece of a scrap of the snippet roll here and so I just glued it down here. So I can go around and stitch this just leaving the flap open and then I may when I go and put this into the journal I may do some embellishing here I'm not sure. So that started and then this bingo card really tripped me up. Um, I just couldn't find the right combination of things, but this is what I ended up with. And I'll probably do something else here. I'm not sure, but this is what I ended up with. So um, I wanted to share those that I had recorded and didn't get saved. And then in this video, I thought we could take some scrap of paper scraps and make some either tuck spots or tags. And then if you saw my first, if or excuse me, if you saw the series where I did flip throughs of the vintage readers that I had um, for sale in my shop, I had, I think at least one of these where I took tea stained paper and folded it and embellished the front and then um, tacked down two sides of the back to make it into a little tuck spot here um, where you could then have all of this room to journal and then also the tuck spot available and only the front was embellished. So we're gonna make one of those. Um, and then I thought we could just alter one of these oversized Rolodex cards. So we'll get started. Um, let's just start with the tea stained paper and some of these I'm going to do a little less detailed than others because it's a good it's good to have a good mix when you go to put them into the journal. And I I always make two little ephemera and then go back and make more as I'm working as I'm filling in the journal. But um, I'm not sure you guys really want to see all of everything of making all the ephemera because I make a lot usually. Um, but I'll give you these basics, these videos, and then I will come back on and show you um, what I've made before we place them into the journal. So I think that's probably the best bet so nobody gets bored or annoyed. Um, before when I was working in the video, I had thought that this image looked good for this piece of tea stained paper. 
And basically all I'm going to do is stitch around this and glue this on and stitch around it. And I think that that will be um, enough for this one. I, you know, I may, as I, after I put this into the journal, I may think like, oh, this needs just a little bit something extra, a top or bottom. But um, for now, I'm just gonna glue this on. And we will call this one complete for now. Um, when I make my journals, that's another reason why I've hesitated to do these really detailed videos is I flip through them and add stuff and flip through them and add stuff. And it's very hard for me to sometimes call a journal done um, and just say, okay, the next owner of the journal is going to continue to make it amazing. Um, so I do end up adding more in different stages. Um, but this will look cute and it's small enough so you know if we wanted to put it here as a full-size pocket that would work let's see do i have anything that i can tuck this is a tag with a quilt top stitch to it that doesn't have a topper but you kind of get the point and you can add multiple things to this pocket and then you also have all of that journaling space so um, I'll stitch across this and I'll show you guys in the next video after everything's been sewn. And let's see, what else can we do? Oh, here are my things. All right, so this is our goal for this video. Uh, let's do some, let's do some scrapbook paper. So this is again, a cutoff from when I was making the pages of either this journal or one of the ones from the series that were for sale in my shop. And we're doing basically the same thing each time, going through my stack of papers that I had. And we're gonna try to find something that we can use It would be going this way. I think I'm gonna leave this as a tag like this. I may poke a hole and um, put something through the top of it. I'm not sure yet, but it will be a flip tag. So I'm just gonna set some things that would work out. Maybe that'll be more efficient. so frustrated when my phone just says you're done basically <laughs> your storage is full I should probably update my phone get a new phone to hold a little bit more storage all right so I flip through and these are what we're left with I don't know if I said this in a video where I was recording or one that got deleted, but a lot of this for me is just trial and error. Um, my biggest tip for doing something like this, I don't always do this type of handmade ephemera in all my journals, but my biggest tip is, I mean, I have a lot of stuff on my desk right now, but my tip for you is to not do what I'm doing and have a limited amount of things because if you have too much, it's going to be very hard. to kind of like focus and get something done, if that makes sense. Let me just fussy cut this out and see what this looks like on my video that um, didn't ever come to life, I was explaining, probably most of you guys are not new to this, but just in case there's somebody out there that is new, when you go to Fussy Cut, um, my this is like, a, you know, all the experts of junk journaling 
will tell you to hold the scissors still and move the object that you're fussy cutting. So I'm moving the paper and not my scissors and it goes a lot smoother and a lot faster. This is from a Corrine Malvern book. Um, I believe it's Nursery Rhymes or Mother Goose. Corrine Malvern's Mother Goose or Nurse, Mother Goose Nursery Rhymes. I would have to find the book because these are all images that I pulled when I made the reader series. But I think it's Corrine Malvern's Mother Goose book which later this year I have it on my to-do list to make over an oversized journal with that book, with the cover of that book. Okay, his arms are kind of doing something strange for me to use. Let's see. Maybe I just need something else here. What else do I have that I can use there? Let's try this. So sometimes I like to make my tags where you could write on the front either a date and the title of an event or a little blurb, a quote, something. Sometimes I like them to be functional. I think we'll go with this one because he's in awe of whatever is here. <clears throat> and these stamps look kind of cute there. So I don't want to overthink it too much. Of course, I will stitch around this journaling card and more than likely, possibly, add something else. But this is my process. I work in layers. I will get something started, you know, a basic, this is something basic, and then I will add it to the journal and then I'll see based after I get it in the journal whether I think it needs something else. Um, and I oftentimes go through journals multiple times, adding different layers. Layers of detail, I should say. So I hope spring has sprung where you guys are. It's getting to be summer here now. I think I mentioned in one of my previous videos that it was an exceptionally or abnormally cool weather in Florida. It is now heated up. It is not cool anymore. Now we're, they're talking about record highs for us, but hopefully that means other places in the country are starting to get, that are normally cold, are starting to get nice weather. So his little hand will have to be cut off because I moved it too far over there, but that's okay. And then depending on if I punch a hole in this or not, there would be something sticking out of here or I could do a little ruffle. I don't think I have any ruffles near me, but I could do a little ruffle here and then you have space here. Of course, I'll stitch around it. And then on the inside and even on the back if it's just a tag. All right, so we'll call that one done. All right, let's do, should we do another? Another scrapbook 
paper tag. Yeah, let's just let's do that. Okay. So what do we want to do for this one? Got some of these items as well as these. I um I recorded well, technically three videos in one sitting. And so now I have a mess and all my stuff is scattered everywhere. But I thought I had some checks. What else do we have that I can collage with? I've got these candy receipts and some of these. Um, what are these? Milk tickets. Let's just see. What have we got here? That kind of goes. So it'd be space for journaling a little bit, like a little, <coughs> excuse me, a little blurb. And I could put something at the top. Let's see this. And this has already got some lined paper on the, like writing paper on the back. Oh, you know what? Where was that? Oh no, that was a different video I was thinking of. Um... Yeah, this will be just a little tag we can tuck into a pocket. So let's just let's just go with this. Um, I'm gonna clean this up with my paper trimmer. It's right over here. So I've got just a little bit more. Go with this. With all of the journals that I sell in my shop, I always add lots of fun treasures you know, to go along and hopefully this everything I add is to use as I'm using them now and so my intention when I make a journal is I decorate I do decorate quite a bit I will admit um but that's the goal is so that when you get it you also decorate more and then at the end when you're finished you have this amazingly embellished piece of art in my mind so where I was going with that is like when I this is some play money if I include play money in a pocket or in the extra it's you know you could do anything with those things um, if you saw my reader previous reader journals you can put some on the edges of pages. You can use them as I'm using in collage. So all of those little elements, that's kind of why I send them along. Um, even these little postage stamps. I mean, these are old five cent postage stamps. 
it's just fun to have kind of collectible vintage things in your in your work or in your journal and you're using things up that may otherwise be thrown away So I will trim, I will stitch around this. For this one, I'm thinking I would probably do zigzag stitch because it's pretty blank. And then I will, I will definitely do something at the top. I, I'm not sure what until I get it finished, but definitely something to give it some oomph and maybe a ruffle. I'm not sure yet but that's a good start. Okay, let's move on. All right. I have to find what I did with, oh, okay. These were the other things. Let's see, what are we at? We're at 21 minutes, okay. Let's do something simple. I was thinking with this, just using like one of these triangles. And maybe a felt button. And that will just tuck into either a tuck spot like um, for these I'm going to use some on the page let me show you this will be in another video I'll do this I'll do this on video too but just so you guys kind of can see my thought process with making these things and then if we were to add this I'm not saying I would do this but this is an option this would be tacked down so it's a tuck spot and then we would just have this journaling card tucked in here and there's there's some embellishment and details but it's pretty simple and front and back journaling space so let's just do that I hope that this series is helping someone out there. And giving you inspiration to do your own treasures and put your own spin on it. It's amazing what you can do with just a few pieces of paper and some book pages and some fabric and there we have it the journaling card so we're really moving that was quick all right these are the last two things on my list and this guy stumped me the last time I don't know why but maybe I'll come up with something you can kind of tell that I'm doing things like everything is is different but the same because uh, that's just a time saver thing that I have to do is um, and that's why I do series of journals and they all kind of have the same feel because when I go to do another one then they have a totally different feel and a different different handmade ephemera different amount of ephemera more some more vintage ephemera um, I forgot what I was saying um oh they're similar but different so like again I'm just using scraps and book pages and creating different looks 
with the same items because it's all going to go in the same journal. I'm kind of thinking just doing this for this and then maybe, maybe like a, a little tab on the side. I don't think we've done anything with tabs yet in this one, no. what this looks like yeah that looks really cute simple but cute sometimes the most simple things turn out really cute hopefully you guys are crafting along with me <laughs> Um, otherwise you may be terribly bored. But the good thing about YouTube is that you don't have to keep watching if you don't like it. So that's the, the joy of YouTube. But I like to watch YouTube videos while I'm creating myself. And you guys will have to let me know if you like these create with me videos. Um, of course I can get better at them. Which side do we like for the front? I'm gonna go with this side, the blue and the blue. We'll go with that, but let me put some tea stained paper on the back. Attack just so I get a faster hold. Okay, and I will stitch around. Let's see, would I do zigzag or straight stitch? Uh, I'm thinking I would probably do straight stitch only because they're straight stitching on the snippet roll, but I don't know. I may change my mind when I go to sew this, but probably straight stitch. That's my thought process. All right, so we've got that done. Let's see, we're 29 minutes, so I think I could I can try to do one more. Um, hopefully I don't get stumped on it. Let's see. Mm, I don't think any, well, I guess, I wonder if we could use, we could do it this way. Didn't think of it that way. Um, let me see. I'm just going through my page of, oh, here, I'll bring it over here so you can see. It was my page of book pages and now I've got <laughs> these other things. What's this? 
This is, hold on, hold up, hold up. Let's see what we can do with this, if anything. Let me see, what did I do with the last one? Oh, I just did, oh, that's, I think that, mm, I don't know if that's from the same book or not. the blue. This is the same blue I used up there. to trim this up just to try a little piece here. Trim this paper strip off here. Or the branding strip, I should say. Let's try. We could do the same thing we did with the other one because we'll put it in a different spot in the book. And again, I could do Maybe some washi tape down here. Let's get this. I'm just going to go ahead. If I don't end up liking it, that's okay. I don't have to use it. Um, but I don't want to take too much time. We're gonna just um, glue this down and then I'll stitch around it and see when I add it to the book if I think it needs anything else and what it may need. Or sometimes I don't use it at all. I make these embellishments and I think that they'll look great and then I don't end up using them in the book. All right, so we're gonna go with that. Okay, so let's wrap this video up. I will show you everything that we made in this video and the video that stopped recording. And then I will <clears throat> stitch around everything and then I will show you the next round what everything looks like. So there's our index cards and a little tag 
and a Rolodex. And another little tag. Again, we're gonna do some more embellishing, but these are good starts. And our little tea stained paper flip bingo card and the craft paper envelope. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I think what I'll do is I'll sew around these things and I will make some more embellishments of the same sort. Just um, the same thing, kind of just using different images so that we have enough to put it throughout the whole book because um, between this and these, there's still nowhere near enough embellishments to fill up the journal. So I'll go ahead and make some more and I'll stitch around them. And then in the next video, I will take you along with me to kind of start putting them inside the books, putting other things inside the book. Um, and we'll go from there. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you guys so much for all your support and for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Have a good day. Bye.